all right I don't want to be the guy to say that I told you so but I, I've been I told you so I've, I've been saying it all along I've been saying it all along Walking Dead World Beyond is a good show it's better than Fear the Walking Dead at least I feel like a lot of people have came on in this last half and uh, started to be like oh yeah it's, it's actually good and I'm, I'm just like I've been saying it I've been saying it but anyway yeah this finale we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna skip to the end and we're gonna talk about the, the post credit scene the scene that you know the very end uh, because it just it just blew my mind I feel like that's an understatement uh, yeah wow they really delivered I would have settled for a lot less of just a little bit of a tick towards Rick or something uh, and it's doesn't really have to do with Rick but it's also just as big right so we get Edwin Jenner dr. Edwin Jenner like is it is it 2010 am I hallucinating like I would have never thought that we would have seen him on the show again uh, but it works uh, because we did see him in Walking Dead season one doing these tapes and recording himself at the CDC uh, so yeah and you know it doesn't feel like contrived that the, the so the French are who I believe they're they're speaking French I believe I could understand they were saying we oui, which is yes in French that's the only French I know right but but yeah I'm sure of that so they're the French and Dr. Jenner said the last contact in the show this actually stuck to me me and my girlfriend were watching uh, Walking Dead season one a few weeks ago and I was like, I wonder why they never touched on anything more about the French, because that just felt like a real throwaway, throwaway line uh, that they had where they said uh, the French were the last people that were standing or that we had contact with, you know, they held out the longest. And um, so yeah, so the French are still going over there. I'm not sure if that was a CRM uh, over there in France. France, I don't know what was going on with that, but I, I do, I am sure it was overseas. So Walking Dead is going international. Um, but yeah, Jenner and the tapes, you know, I, I like that actor, Jenner. So I'm thinking the reason he was on here, World Beyond, or one of the polls for how they got him back, the actress who plays Huck, I've just started watching a show called The Americans, and the actress that plays Huck is in the same show, is in The Americans with the actor who plays Jenner. They have like a romance going on or something, and Huck, uh, Huck's actress in that show also plays like a, uh, double agent type thing so it's kind of funny but but yeah so I'm, I'm thinking their connection is how she he ended up getting on the show and they the pull that they had to get him back um, but yeah so crazy so good to see Jenner again one of the tapes that he was recording in the CDC you know it, it looks just like they got the same CDC background and everything it's just I'm a sucker for that nostalgia so that was awesome alone and then they're jumping the shark a little bit but uh you know it's it's cool though I, I think it's cool uh, and I am definitely with this thinking that they're going to cure the virus in the Rick movies because they're given so much more in detail about the virus at this point that I'm thinking they're gonna have to explain this stuff away and why it's happening this way or you know something like that and I think hopefully we get the Rick movies all three of them you know it seems like they would have this stuff planned out because they're putting this in World Beyond which I'm guessing will be in the Rick movies but the zombies uh, apparently are faster, stronger in France, overseas for some reason, which is just such a huge development. I would have never thought. I'm sure Robert Kirkman, I don't really think he gives a shit, but if he did give a shit, I think he would hate this, the creator of Walking Dead, right? Um, but, uh, yeah, so we get, the, we get the sense. I like that, how Jenner's like, you know, we'll cure this one day, whatever. And uh, we haven't seen any of the, well, I forget what he said, like types of, you know, uh, outbreaks that you're talking about in your last recording, you know, and I was like, what is he talking about? And then she comes in, they get killed. I'm going to have to rewatch the scene. I'm not sure what was going on between the two of them or if it would really even be all that relevant. Uh, but the girl gets killed, and then I like it. She animates quick, gets up a little bit quick. It's creepy. It's a little bit creepy, you know. I don't think we're going to go like the World War Z type fast zombies. Um... But I do think that they will be as fast as what a human, human, regular human can be. Um, so you see her get up real quick and kind of sprint a little bit faster than what a regular walker would. 
the American zombies, they're, the American zombies are just lazy. You know, that's what it is. They're just lazy because they're Americans. Nah, I don't know. But it sprints over to the door. The, the walker noise is different. Um, it sounds more like a female, uh, I guess, uh, because usually the male and female zombies don't sound all that different. Um, but it sounds more human. And uh, it's banging on the, the door kind of rapidly. Um, so yeah, it seems like these zombies are maybe a little bit more closer to being human than, than dead. I don't know. But I'm sure that this is going to tie into the Rick movies and they'll explore on this. Walking Dead's going international, you know. Maybe Rick is overseas. I'm sure maybe we'll get to see him go to France or something, you know. I, I would think so um, in one of the movies. Apparently they're about to start filming. Uh, so yeah, so great to see Jenner again, you know. And it all fits and it works because this is all stuff that connects to season one, you know, the French, they, they touched on that, and, uh, you know, him doing the recordings, and, uh, yeah, it doesn't feel like it was just shoehorned in or laid over or anything, it's just, it's interesting and super nostalgic, so cool, you know, I would have never thought we would have seen Jenner again, you know, awesome, um, so yeah, we didn't see, didn't see Rick, but I'm fine with it, because this is, this is probably one of the biggest fundamental changes for the Walking Dead universe overall, but anyway, I've spent like six minutes just talking about this how crazy it is exciting um and i do want to talk about the episode and the characters a little bit uh so i'm going to go ahead and get into my notes here because i did like the show i was pretty sad to see these characters for the last time as far as we know a lot of them or all of them i hope they'll pop up in the movies or in some capacity because i am i've said it i'm more of a fan of all of these characters than i am of and this show's only been going two seasons than i am of the characters on Walking Dead that aren't spin-off characters. Like, I'm not talking about Morgan Dwight. I'm talking about, like, Alicia, Luciana, uh, Daniel, even, you know, uh, in his current state. Characters like that don't appear. Um, so, anyway, we get the opening scene. It was a nice callback to the beginning, the start, um, you know, kind of get a little bit bittersweet. Uh, <clears throat> although it kind of didn't sync up with the ending because he opened the door and he said something. At the start, and then at the ending, he opened up the door and said something different. Uh, El, uh, fuck, Corduroy Kid. I can never remember his name. Uh, but yeah, it was nice and um, nostalgic for that. And uh, I think they did a good job of getting the actors to look like they used to. Uh, Elton, Elton is his name. Uh, but they were saying he's a lot taller than what he used to be, but they still got the hair looking short and everything. So they did good with that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Silas kept using this weapon to kill zombies in here that looked really silly. A lot of the kills, like I did like the intro scene and all that, you know, to show where they were and where they are now. But um, uh, the, the slices that they were doing on the zombies' heads, it looked like they were just cutting the forehead. And then Silas with his weapon goes in, and I swear to God, the head just disintegrated into like blocks. It looked so weird. But yeah, that's just a minor complaint, I guess. And then they had the sunrise effect with the Walking Dead world beyond. It looked kind of strange, but, you know, I can tell that they were they were feeling it, you know. So I did like that. It was a good good final intro. I don't like intros for, like, the final episode of a series or something where it doesn't feel like it's the final episode, you know. But this intro definitely did. Um, let's see. <laughs> and they were kind of taking shots at themselves, I guess, for the complaints from Season 1. Where they're like, why didn't we do this whole journey on foot? Why didn't we just take a vehicle or something? But they were like, oh, that would have been too, you know, obvious to people. They would have heard the car or something, you know. So uh, Silas tells uh, tells Iris, he's sorry about Percy. He ain't fucking sorry about Percy. He's happy he's gone. He like he he wanted him out of the way. Uh, let's see. Uh, Huck tells Hope, uh, you're the future kid. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, sure, okay. You know how I feel about Hope and Iris if you've watched their views. I, they didn't annoy me too bad in these last few episodes, but, you know, whatever. Um, let's see. Silas's goodbye was nice. Now that he has friends to say goodbye to, you know. Uh, yeah, that's the last time I guess Silas will see the group. You know, he's off being a soldier now, but we'll get to that. Uh, so Felix versus Newton. Awesome uh, fight scene, you know. I didn't really notice. I guess Felix and Newton kind of had scenes building this up. But yeah, I love Felix's character, so I was glad that they gave him a big showdown. And uh, yeah, and he it's it's a, it's a smart the the writer of the show Matt. He did a great job. Uh, he was talking about how he thought about the scene and wanted to show everybody's growth. And with Felix, it was Felix controlling his temper and sitting back and not letting this guy get the best of him. 
and thinking about it, and he opened up the gate, let the zombies come out, and then he ends up gutting the dude afterwards after he tires out. So yeah, super awesome uh, fight scene with Huck. I mean, uh, Felix versus Newton, and then you get the Doctor and uh, Doctor Bennett and uh, Will also fighting in the woods. Um, cool. Um, versus them fighting the CRM. Uh, I'm, I'm still so surprised I can get a drop on these fully armored soldiers, but you know what? It was still, I enjoyed it. Um, so Silas and Dennis, oh my god. They, those characters, I've told you, I've loved those two interactions and the way they built it up, man, and the way it ended, it's like, uh, it reminds me of Lee and Clementine uh, from the Telltale games, man. He has to put them down and he, and uh, Dennis kind of became like a father figure to Silas and um, Silas killed his, his, his dad, and then he killed his second dad, you know, the dad that he actually kind of liked, uh, so he could um, say that, you know, Dennis was holding him captive or whatever. You know, I did like that end. It was a good, tragic, bittersweet end for them that way. And then we get Jadis versus Huck. Um, another cool fight scene, man. I didn't think they were going to take out Jadis, uh, so I knew it was going to be Huck, because Jadis, they probably need her for the movies um, to some capacity, because she really set her cemented her character in this series in these last few episodes for sure. She wasn't just like a gimmick character. She was in there to play, man. Um, yeah, she did a great job, Jadis, um, as a villain, I think, or kind of in between whatever, how she was in The Walking Dead as well. Um, but yeah, so Huck died. I liked her character, but, you know, I, I guess it was fitting for her to go for sure. And, uh, and, and, and yeah, so I did like Huck, but I expected somebody to go. So it had to be, had to be her. Um, let's see. So we get a reveal why Jada said that Rick was a bee um, on the walkie back in um, The Walking Dead. So the bee, I believe, I could get this mixed up. The bee are the strong people um, that they use as a part of the community. And then the A's are the infected and or science experiments. And realistically, she should have used Rick, said that Rick was an A, as a science experiment because he was so injured he was like dying anyway but she said that he was a bee so they would come and you know help him and uh, you know so so yeah she kinda explained that better I could have I already kind of figured that out for myself like you know um, before they explained it but it was good to hear her confirm that's why she said that he was a bee you know or an A I forget what she said but um, yeah she was just trying to save Rick's life and then Rick turned into a huge story piece, not just, it didn't just progress Rick's story or whatever, wherever he went. Um, it progressed Jada's story as well. She reiterates time and time again that he was kind of her way to a promotion, you know, um, because I guess he proved himself valuable some way we'll have to see. Um, let's see. Uh, so Irina, I think is her name or something like that, comes in and saves the day with the truck and shoots them down, all the zombies down from uh, Corduroy Kid, Iris, and Hope. Um, but... I would have liked, I, I would have preferred them to take a little shot, so in the intro scene they say, like, uh, avoidance is key, you know. Uh, I would have preferred, because it was kind of a small pack, I would have preferred them just to, like, run around them instead of the badass, you know, right at the last second comes in and shoots them down, you know, conveniently. Uh, but whatever, it was a way to reintroduce those characters coming back, Irina and her daughter. Um, let's see. And then Corduroy Kid gets bit because his jacket is tied around his waist. A huge regret there, I'm sure, that he wasn't wearing it. Uh, but he ends up amputating. They end up amputating his arm. Um, I thought it was a little silly. Uh, it was fitting the way he puts his arm out for Hope because he used to have a crush on Hope or whatever. I don't think he does anymore. I think he's with the other chick now. But um, I thought it was a little silly the way the zombie snuck up on Hope, though. Uh, but at the same time, I guess I could tell myself that, okay, that big machine gun just shot. So maybe there was like a ringing in her ears, you know, from the loud noise, maybe. Um, but yeah, it was kind of strange that it snuck up on her, but, you know, okay. Um, that's a minor complaint there, I guess. Beautiful scenery throughout this entire show. Um, yeah, just, uh, yeah, you get the backdrop wherever Jadis has Silas at, um, the cityscape, all of that, man. That's, that's something that this show has done better than, um, probably just as well better than any of the, the spinoffs, I think. I mean, Walking Dead has had its moments. Uh, but, but yeah, this show has had some beautiful, um, um, scenery in it, for sure. And then, let's see, uh, Jada says that Rick was the strongest person she ever met, 
which is cool. Um, and it kind of fits into what she's about to do to Huck's mom, where she just makes Huck's mom the fall for everything bad that the CRM has done. So the CRM still didn't really lose in this. They did lose all their their research and stuff, right? Um, but uh, but but yeah. So that was cool hearing her say say that he was the strongest person she ever met. Uh, Silas is a CRM soldier now, but I guess he's going to be an inside man later on. That's what I'm saying. It would be cool to see these characters again, but I'm just not sure how they would do that. Um, Hope, and, Hope and Iris have their last little scene together with the middle fingers. It was a little corny, but at the same time, it's a, it's a callback. So, okay, um, you know, it's fine. Uh, yeah, so mostly everybody gets a happy ending, I guess, except for Huck. Um, Huck's mom in, in jail. Uh, I guess that wasn't a happy ending either. And then, yeah, the ending, it felt a little bit abrupt to me, but I had, um, I had somehow, like, skipped over a scene, like, the, a, a little bit with my, uh, recording I was watching it on. So, I guess it wasn't all that abrupt, but I guess I just kind of didn't want it to end, you know, I wanted more, more from it, because, like I said, I was a fan of mostly all of these characters, except for Iris and Hope. Um, super crazy, um, change at the end, the post credit scene. Um, and what it means for the show, and I like the final scene to open up the door and the flash of light come out with the Walking Dead world beyond. So yeah, overall, season two, this last half was great. The rest of it was just okay. You know, I definitely think it had its moments. It wasn't a perfect show, uh, but yeah, I really enjoyed it. Like I said, more than I have fear uh, for quite a while. If you know, indefinitely, I enjoy the characters on uh, World Beyond. Um, so yeah, I hope we see them again. I would like to. But yeah, it, it really hit hard with that ending, with what it means for the Walking Dead universe, uh, what it could mean going forward, you know? I mean, I wouldn't expect to see these fast zombies anywhere except for the Rick movies, because they're only overseas. But yeah, still crazy. Got to see Jenner again. Uh, absolutely loved it. So yeah, let me know what you thought of the finale. I'm pretty sure everybody um, was, was a big fan of this one. Uh, yeah, so that's it for uh, Walking Dead World Beyond.